Well, this morning, I'm really excited to, to uh, have a special guest speaker with us here. Um, I, I want to I take a moment to talk about this because there's been several times that I have gone to a church, especially if it was my first time, and a guest speaker is speaking, and I'm like, man, I want to hear the normal pastor. Listen, this guy's better than me. I promise you, this is, this is incredible because it's kind of like two of my worlds colliding, okay? Back in 2011, I had the opportunity to move for a, a, a short season uh, to North Pole, Alaska. Yeah. And, and I lived there until it got cold, and then I left. Some of y'all think North Pole, Alaska is covered in snow all year round. It's, it's not. <laughs> I, th I thought it was. But while I was there, um, you know, I had the opportunity to work with this, with this man, this pastor. And, and over uh, the last 16 years, I've had the opportunity to be a part of and, and uh, know a little bit deeper and work with or volunteer with about 12 different church organizations. And a lot of these different organizations, uh, I think that you can attest in your life, you learn from every experience. Sometimes you learn what not to do. Amen? Anybody feel me? Your current job, maybe? I mean, I don't know. But sometimes you, you got to take what's going on and go, okay, now I'm learning what not to do. But every once in a while, you get the pleasure and the opportunity to work for somebody who teaches you what to do. Pastor Daryl is a man that, that taught me uh, really how to pastor, how to shepherd people and how to care for them. And, and in my opinion, uh, he, is, he is a hero in the faith. And for me, it is a privilege and an honor that, we are, that I get to share this, this stage um, with someone of such high caliber. Uh, he has an incredible mission that he is about, and I'm excited for him to share it with you this morning. So we're going to watch a promotional video real quick that's just going to share a little bit about what he does. And then whenever he comes up after that video, I want Mission City Church to get crazy and welcome one of my pastors to the stage. His name is Pastor Daryl Carnley. Watch this video and then let's get after it. My 360 Project has developed a shoe to change and save the lives of children around the world. And in the process, they realized in order to help children, they would have to disrupt the ordinary in order to discover the extraordinary. My 360 Project develops shoes because in the developing world, children must have shoes to access education. And without shoes, a child's lifespan and opportunities are drastically limited. Additionally, walking is the primary mode of transportation. And when children don't have the proper fitting shoes, their feet are prone to disease and infections that can impact their overall health. My 360 Project partnered with Mike Freeton a former senior innovator at Nike, to design a shoe that would protect children's feet and transform the economy of communities around the world. As a world-renowned shoe expert, Mike's passion has been to develop shoes that enable feet to develop naturally. Well, Daryl came into my shop. Um, we sort of brainstormed and I talked him into sort of some of my ideas, <laughs> which was, I'd rather have them making it locally to distribute to the, so you empower the communities that you're trying to give the shoes to. And to me, that, that was a better model. Where, the, you know, working with children is just like an amazing gift in there that you can just see their heart open up, you know. It's a completely different experience. Um, uh, it's, there's much a much sort of deeper connection there. Um, and at this point in my life, this is something a lot more fulfilling. You know, I spent many years working with athletes. And uh, it's great to be able to put a shoe on, the, on, on their feet and see them go out and do amazing things. Uh, but it, this is more, 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 a lot more than that. My 360 Project desires to disrupt the cycle of poverty by creating a sustainable solution of employment for those who have been victims of trafficking or are unemployable due to a lack of opportunities or education. Our shoes are handmade by local artisans. So rather than negatively impacting a community's economy, the My360 Project creates additional economic opportunity. There is power in the personal touch of washing a child's feet before giving them a shoe. The band Unspoken recently traveled with My360 Project to deliver shoes, and it had a huge impact for the members of the band. Here's Chad talking about their trip. 
Being here with my 360 project has just been super neat because it's given us an opportunity to um, get our kids involved in the things that um, are important and close to God's heart. You know, an eight-year-old girl put shoes and washed the feet of an eight-year-old uh, migrant worker, you know, from El Salvador, and the smiles and the connection and, um, and really living out that faith. And I think the washing of the feet is something that's so important. By sponsoring shoes to children in need, My360 Project is making an impact across the globe. The shoes are being made often by those individuals the society has left behind. And by giving these individuals income with purpose and dignity, it's time to disrupt, discover, and deliver. I think I'm on. Am I on? Cool. You may be seated. Thank you so much. It's an amazing honor to be here. I love these guys right here. Pastor Josh, I could just go on for a long time about some funny stories with him, but we won't do that. Later on, if you want, if you want to pay me, I could give you a few things. But um, I, I no longer live in Alaska. I, I retired from senior pastoring, of, did 25 years, did 43 years in Alaska. My parents were missionaries. I'm a fourth-generation missions kid. Family got to Alaska in the early 1900s. Uh, I've aged really well, cold. <laughs> but, uh, but I did my time up there. I live in Phoenix now, so I can preach colder than hell because I live in the North Pole. I can preach hotter than hell because I live in Phoenix. So I don't know what sermon you want today. We can do either one. But uh, it is an honor to be here at Mission Church, and uh, one of the fun things that you can do, there's a little slide here in uh, that video that we just played. If you could text SHOES to 24365, you can download that video, and what you could do for us is exposure. Just put it on social media. I think you have social media here in Tampa. <laughs> Facebook's here. Is that true? Okay. Uh, but f text and, and forward that for us, and while you're on there, like us on, on Facebook. My 360 Project. This is what you do after you retire. You go to Nike and you say, hey, there's 300 million kids who need shoes in the world. No shoes. 11 million kids die before their fifth birthday not having adequate, and one of it's not having adequate shoes. And it's pr pretty crazy to see the need. And so I decided after pastoring for 25 years and, and Josh being with us and doing great things, I said, you know, I, I just want to travel the world. I hit my 101st country in August. And uh, we're in 11 countries. In fact, shoes right now are on their way to Pakistan. And we wash these kids' feet, and we just love on them. And so, and then we are working, we're actually moving into northern Iraq to do some work there and working with an ISIS group there that's anti-ISIS. They're pulling the people out, the ladies, and giving them jobs. So it's really a lot of fun. And the shoe that I have here, this was actually built in Vicente Guerrero, and uh, the shoe comes flat, and it's kind of a fun little thing. You just pull this here, and it becomes a shoe. And it actually grows with their feet. It's simple made. And... Wow, it's crazy what happens when you live in Alaska. You get wild dreams, and this is something that happened from there. But uh, I do want to share with you today um, a word. I love fun words, and I make up words. And, and as I pastor for 25 years, there's different people in our congregation that have dictionaries. And my wife, as she's watching, she would say, yes, I just make up words. I'm thinking, why can't we? <laughs> well, that's not a word. I... I Edgar Allan Poe, man, that's my favorite, you know, I make up words, and so today I want to talk, I want, I want to talk about uh, goology, I, I want you to become a goologist, all right, I think I made that word up, I don't even know how to spell it, I, I, it's like a G-O-O-L-O-G-Y, or just G-I-S-T, but I want you to become a goologist, because the one thing that is so important living for God is going. Two-thirds of God's name is go. Huh? Anybody want to debunk that? The most expensive word in the Bible is two letters. Go. And I want to talk about that today. And, and thanks for having me. And I'm going to do my best to stay on the clock. I can't promise anything. But I'll do my best. There's a trap door here, he said. 
Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this great congregation, my first time ever in Tampa Bay. And uh, thank you for allowing me to deliver this word in your name. Amen. I look out in the audience and it's hard for me to see, but right over here, there's actually some pastors that pastored in our church in Alaska, Roy and Sharon Lovegrove over here. Wave your hands. Give them a big hand. They're from, they're from Tampa. He's always talking about some obscure NH, NHL, no, NFL. You, oh, you have Buccaneers. That's what it is. He was always wearing Buccaneers. I'm like, who is, who's that? But uh, anyways, I'm not going to, okay, see, I just lost most of you right there. Sorry, sorry. But I want to share with you uh, about missions. And, and the church here is actually going to give opportunities for people to do a mission with us possibly uh, in, in Cozumel in May. But the challenge of this is, as I've lived for the Lord most all of my life, uh, there's a few years there in my teen years that I tried to run away and become an atheist, and whew, that was tough. Um, went to my father, and he, Dad, I'm going to become an atheist, and he goes, good luck with that. So here I am. So you see how it worked out. Uh, but I want to share with you about uh, the go, and I want to talk about the go, going, and gone. Because I want to challenge you to become a missionary. It's not just overseas, but it's right in your own community. And, and it's, it's an important thing in our life. Because sometimes a church, we, a setting, we can get so excited about what's happening here, we forget what's happening out there. And God has called you to become a goologist. He's called you every single day to share the gospel in your way. Might not be my way, but I believe every single day we get to be the light to the world, and it's a blast. I love it. Where I'm at now, I've gotten to do some of the funnest things in the last few years. We've had about three years of doing this, and I meet the wildest of people. I have taken atheists with me on trips, and I love it. I say, we are going to wash feet like Jesus. I had a whole busload of, of, of Orthodox Jewish neurologists I wanted them for the neurologist side so they could tell my mom I have a brain. But I said, we're going to eat bacon and we're going to wash feet like Jesus. The head neurologist says to me, he goes, we all eat bacon, we just don't tell anybody. He said, the Jesus thing, that's okay. But I believe however God has designed you, you can share the gospel. But the first part of it, Matthew 28, 19, the go, is such an incredible intimate conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples. This is not just a haphazard conversation. He's being very direct with them. And he says this in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even into the end of age. Wow. This is Christ's command to us. And every one of us here have probably heard this passage. But, but it's, it's, it's fun for you. And I, I challenge you as a, as a homework assignment to take that passage and just take it word for word. And put yourself where the disciples were with Jesus as he's looking them in the eyes. And he's giving his last commands to the church. And he didn't say stay and be comfortable and be a consumer. He said no, I want you to go. Yesterday, I was in Sacramento, California, had to do an all-night flight to here, so if I doze off midway through the sermon, throw something at me. Uh, this is Red Bull. It was a part of a funeral of a missionary friend of mine that passed away January 1st on the mission field, one of my great friends, 52 years old. He gave everything, and on the mission field lost his life January 1st. And we're sitting there in a church packed out like this, and the testimonies were amazing. Because when you go, there, there's obstacles, there's struggles. But the key is, is to go. And that's what he tells us. Matthew, uh, Acts chapter 1, 8, he tells us where to go. He says, tell, he says, tell us we will be witnesses. He says, go be witnesses to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. We call that like here, near, and far. It's local to global. It's your city. It's your state. It's your country. It's your world. It's your family. It's your friends. It's your community and beyond. You have to find your place, but it's our opportunity to go. No matter where you work. If you're here today and you work at a job that you don't like, that is your mission field that you need to learn to love. 
become the best burger flipper you could ever be. I'm talking if you're a checker at Walmart, please. You hear that inflection of my voice. Just smile. And I go through, I love it. I, I mean, I, I try, and this is crazy. My wife, as she's watching, she's going, Daryl, you're a liar. But I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling the truth. I try to pick the longest lines because, man, in those longest lines, you hear all kind of things. Like, I just flew Spirit Airlines here, and I'm not picking on them because you might work for them. But I just try to be the friendliest person I can on there. I've learned to carry your own toilet paper. But the key is... <laughs> Be nice in the go. That's the thing. What happens is, is, is God wants us to go. He says, I want you to go everywhere. But, but does God really need us? Well, not really, but he loves it when we participate in what he's doing. What happens is, it, it, you know, Henry Blackaby from Experiencing God says this, if you want to do his will, look where he's moving and go there. That's so important for you. Like every person in here, you just take a moment and think you know where your go's at. But here's the deal. It's the going, number two, that becomes the struggle. The going requires some prayer and focus. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Let me tell you what, if it's a mission trip, let's say you're going to go with us to Mexico or you're going to go with me to, uh, to Africa or someplace. It's crazy the amounts of excuses you can give yourself. As you can notice, I have not started the diet yet for the year. The excuses, I mean, I want to go. I mean, I've got all the boxes of things, and I've got the treadmill that's got some really cool hats on it. And I got the go down, but when the going gets there, oh my goodness. I had a lady come to me some years ago. We were doing a trip to the, the Dream Center in L.A., and she goes, Pastor Darrell, I want to do this. I want to do this, but I'm just afraid I'm going to get mugged. I said, all right, that could happen, it's L.A. It's fair, you know, she goes, in Fairbanks, it's so safe. And I said, well, but you're, you're psyching yourself out. True story, day of, I finally talk her into it. Day of, she's driving to the airport, down airport way, takes a left, goes into the last USA bank, gets money out. I get a call from her husband. She, he goes, Pastor D, you're never going to believe this. My wife just got robbed. I think they're punking me because that happens in my ministry because we love humor. I think I'm being punked. Sure enough, she gets mugged in her own town, Fairbanks. So I drive over there and she's all shaking and, you know, and I go, listen, we got it over with. <laughs> Get on the dang plane and go do a mission. And she looks at me. I said, listen, she's <laughs> hugging her. You're going to be fine. You're going, to be, you're going to make the news here. This is cool. It's going to be great for our church and our mission program, you know. <laughs> get on the plane. She goes on the plane. She comes back, and she's like, this was the best. I said, did you get mugged in L.A.? She goes, actually, it was kind of safe. I said, well, that's the problem. We get the going, gets in our way, and we struggle, and we get nervous. You just have to do it. It's like what Nike says, just do it. It's so amazing. Have you, you know, there's somebody you want to witness to and you're like, oh, how am I going to do this? Well, it's, like, it's like, if you guys meet my wife, you're like, how did the heck did he get that gorgeous blonde? My dad always taught me, if you can handle no, you can handle anything. I just ask a lot of girls. And finally, one said yes, you know. <laughs> I, I'm the baby. I have five sisters. I'm the baby, you know. It, it, but the thing is, is you just have to do it. And if you can handle no, you can truly handle anything almost. But that's the problem with sometimes in church, we psych ourselves out. There's someone right now in your heart that you know that tomorrow you should just go say, hey, can I buy you a coffee? I need to apologize. You know, whatever it may be, just go do it. But what happens is, is the going so many times just kind of messes with us. I love Hebrews 13, 21. May he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. Amen. But going is the key. You've got to try it. Go on a mission trip with us. Find an organization to go with. Do something local. Maybe it's volunteering in the Sunday school. 
But let me caveat that. I remember one time preaching a small, we were in a smaller church at the time, and I needed a Sunday school teacher, and I do that sermon, man, and it just convinces everybody. So this one lady, she decided she was going. She was going to do it. She was in the Sunday school for about like six weeks, and I had so many complaints. And finally one day, I call her in, and I go, what's going on? She goes, I, I hate children. <laughs> so, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Why, why did you do this? We were so convincing. I said, no, let the Holy Spirit lead you. I just was putting the need out there. I mean, if you go to Mexico with us and, and you're over there complaining about this and that, don't go with, I mean, it's, it's missions. Find where you fit. It's like I, I have a relative that's a horrible singer and they always want to have a solo. And I'm like... <laughs> Like, could you do like a solo so low we can't hear you? I mean, find where you fit. It really, it feels better when you do that. So there's the go, the going. And then I love this part, it's the gone. It's the faith has happened. You've activated the yes in your life. You've gone on a mission. You, you, you've done something. You, you've got an accomplishment in your life. I love, we have our, our company's My360 Project, and, and the My, God just said, challenge people to be selfish again in, in the right way. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then the 360 is we want everybody to have a great connect. But then the project, I've been married 32 years. You know how that goes. Man, there's always these projects they give you, the wife, you know. But when you conclude it, you feel so good. It's like, I did the dishes tonight. You know, I, it's like, yeah, there's some ladies here going, yeah, yeah. But I feel good about it. It's the same thing when, when you're involved. The Bible says about when you help lead someone to Christ, that your fruit will remain. There's something about that excitement. I was standing at the front of our stage in North Pole years ago, and this lady brings another gal up, and she says, Pastor, could you lead her to Christ? And I go, no. I might have even said, like, heck no. <laughs> and they're both looking at me. You know, here's a lady, you know, she's needing Jesus, and here's the other lady wanting, you know, and I go, you lead her to Christ. Amen. She looks at me. I said, you've gone to the classes? I mean, it's not hard. I mean, you get the holy hand out. No, just kidding. You know? <laughs> and she led this lady to Christ. And as far as I know, they're still great friends. And they've discipled. And now they're just helping build the kingdom. Because see, what happens when you've gone, it's an amazing thing. Revelation 12, 11, one of my favorite passages, and hardly everyone quotes it completely, but let me read the whole thing to you. Revelation 12, 11. And they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. And they did not love their life so much that they were not afraid to die for the cause. See, until you've gone, you can't have a testimony. You can be a big talker, but it's that chance of serving. It's that chance of, of being in Sunday school. And, and I remember as a child, I started preaching when I was seven. It might not seem that way because I haven't preached in a while. He risked his life letting me be here. Um, I'm not always, I don't, sometimes under the anointing, I say things that my mother gets mad at. But I remember as, as, as just being a child minister, to this day, getting... I mean, I'm, I know I don't look 54, but I am. Um, getting messages from, they were just little kids, and now they're doing exploits for God. I love that. It's the mission. I've been, on a, been doing missions all my life, and it's so cool. I, I got to go to Africa in 2016. Uh, April will be my 20th trip to Uganda, and I, I love the place. But, but when I got to fly in 2016, a little Rwandan kid that, that was orphaned during all of the situations that happened in Uganda, we helped raise him up. And he helped pay for my ticket to come to Africa to do a mission. And he was that little guy in a village back in the 90s. And he's grown an organization and a company. I mean, how many missionaries get to go do missions in that fashion? And it's not even self-serve. It's just the point is, is if we don't go... And we're not going, and we don't have the gone happen in our life, then we're just sitting there in regret. 
And that's one thing that I struggle with as being a believer. And man, I've had some crazy regrets. I'm telling you, Christianity is, is, a, is a contact sport. And if you don't think it is, whew, you haven't been in it that long. I've been in it all my life. It's, it's some crazy stuff. There's some mean Christians. I'm talking, whoa, you know. But I tell you, at the end of the day, when you've been involved with helping someone come to Christ. I remember the first little boy that we ever put shoes on his feet, was Camelou, Mexico. And I, uh, being the founder of the organization, I got to do the first pair. I think they found me the stinkiest little kid. Man, he had pooped his pants. Whew. And, and they know I have a weak stomach, but I tell you, I got down on my knees, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this. And I started washing his feet, and I looked up at his eyes, and he just looked at me. You can't beat that look. You can't beat that look. It's, it, it's just so amazing. One of these days, we're going to be walking around in heaven. And, and is there anyone going to come up to you and say, thank you? You were in a sermon one day, and you heard about becoming a goologist, and you came to the job, and you changed your attitude toward me because I was being mean to you because I'm going through a struggle that you don't even know about. And you came in, and you just flipped the switch. And I went to Mission Church, and and I heard a great sermon by Pastor Josh, and, and I got baptized, and thank you. That's the stuff, man, that makes it worth our while living for Christ. But until we go, it's hard to have a testimony. Matthew 9, 37 and 38, and not at all trying to make anyone feel bad here today. I'm just trying to touch a part of your heart that I know is there that God wants to just erupt. Jesus says this in Matthew 9, 37. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his field. So as you're sitting there, psyching yourself out, oh God, do they even want to hear about Christ? Jesus himself said the harvest is great. It's just, is our heart ready? We know what the go is. Now it's time to do the going. And then all of a sudden when we come back and we get to worship and testify about being gone, wow. Wow. There's nothing like it. It's the most amazing feeling in my life. This last weekend, I did a small shoe give down in Vicente. Had a pastor friend of mine with me that lost his son back in September. And uh, the first time he'd done any ministry since then. And we had him out and we're washing feet and just a lot of things going on. And at the very end, I dropped him off in San Diego And he just said, thank you. He said, just washing those kids' feet kind of reunited something in my heart. Because it's about serving. It's about serving. There's nothing, there's nothing like it. We had an organization try to buy us out a few years ago. Offered us a lot of money for our shoe design. And they just wanted to build a lot of shoes overseas and dump into a lot of communities. And I said, I don't want to do that. I said, I I don't want to do that. I didn't do it for that. I I want each individual shoe to go on a child. And I want a person, whether they're indigenous or a missionary or, or whomever, whatever age, I want them to wash that child's foot. Because there's something about a connect. I always wonder at the end of the evening, I was in Haiti some time ago. We gave away a bunch of shoes And I'm always wondering, they didn't even know we were coming. And here's these little Haitian kids. They call them throwaway kids. They're in a place called Renault, Haiti. No names. We actually give them names. And you're washing these little kids' feet. They have no shoes. And I'm always wondering, what did they think that night when they're laying in whatever they're sleeping in? And it's not much. And they're looking down at their feet. Did we plant a seed of hope? 
That's what it's about. Can you remember right now in your life when you were young and a Sunday school teacher or a coach or someone, a preacher or a pastor, somebody planted some hope in your life? It was, for me, it was my mom and dad. I had a phenomenal parents. My father went on to be with the Lord and they were always speaking, man, life. That's not always the case in a lot of people's life, but I guarantee you can think back to that one person. They planted hope. That's what we get to do when we become a goologist. We get to plant hope in people's lives. I don't care how bad you've been hurt in church, what you've gone through. Jesus is the answer. Love always wins. Love always wins. And I challenge you as I close in prayer. I'd love you to get involved with us. I'd love you to like us on Facebook. All those things come out there and I'll give you a little sticker you can put on something. That person, I don't know, put it somewhere. But I just want you to go. I want you to not get too psyched out on the going. But I want you to come back after you've gone and declare the graciousness of God whether it be local to global go let's pray Father I thank you for this great church I thank you for the opportunity to share love I love what you've allowed me to be able to do and, and got each person here has the command of go in their life and there's someone here who doesn't know you Christ they haven't had that personal relationship. Lord, I know there's prayer partners at the end of this service that will pray with them because no one should leave here without the command of go in their life. And Lord, it's not a forceful command, but it's a loving command that we're to go into all the world and preach your wonderful gospel, which is the good news. We thank you for this church. We thank you for the pastors and the leadership. We pray a blessing on Mission Church. In Jesus' name, amen.